Gently place a hand behind the posterior portion or occiput of the skull. Measure the head circumference in centimeters by wrapping a measuring tape in a circle just above her eyebrows to the most prominent aspect of the occiput and back again. Determine if her head is of normal size by plotting the circumference on a newborn growth chart. The head circumference should be in the average range for infants of the same gestational age and also fall approximately in the same percentile as the infant's length and weight. Next, what is the shape of your patient's head? A newborn skull is made up of several bony plates that meet along flexible cranial sutures. In the center, they form a soft spot known as the anterior fontanelle. There is also a smaller fontanelle in the back, the posterior fontanelle. The first letters of the cranial suture and fontanelle spell out the word clams. C is for coronal suture, L is for lambdoid suture, A is for anterior fontanelle, M is for metopic suture, S is for sagittal suture. This design allows the skull to be malleable enough to fit through the birth canal, which often leads to a temporary deformation called molding. Check the infant's skull for bruising and swelling. A bruise that doesn't cross the suture lines is called a cephalohematoma, which is caused by bleeding below the periosteum and is more common in births assisted by a vacuum or forceps. These infants are at increased risk of jaundice due to the breakdown of hemoglobin as the bruise resolves. If the swelling crosses suture lines, it is most commonly due to a caput succedaneum, a fluid accumulation that forms above the periosteum due to the force of delivery. The swelling typically resolves within a few days of birth. Rarely, you may see more extensive swelling that crosses suture lines due to the rupture of emissary veins. This is called a subgaleal hemorrhage and can lead to more serious complications due to significant blood loss in a large potential space. Finally, run your fingers over the skin of the infant's scalp. If you feel any areas where the skin is missing or has an unusual texture, it may be a sign of cutis aplasia, a congenital anomaly in which the scalp has not formed properly. This finding is not inherently dangerous, but should prompt a thorough examination for other atypical physical features.